Today we are going to see how to create the Pokemon Bite attack. It's one of those attacks that looks simple but has some interesting small tricks behind that I want to show you and it has been in the Pokemon series from way back and today I'm going to show you how to create the latest version of this ability. You can download this project and this asset in my Patreon page, links below. You will find plenty of visual effects there that you can use in your games or to study up close. So, without further ado, let's jump right into this. And there are several ways we could do this. We could even use a 3D mesh or even a trail render if you want to go crazy. But as you can see, the easiest way and the lightest way is to use an image, a text that we are going to create in a moment. Let's for now create a visual effect graph in a folder, rename it to VFX graph underscore byte and drag and drop it to our scene. I'm gonna push it in the Y, a value of 1 or 2 and then press the edit button to open VFX graph and dock it more or less around here. So we don't need this to spawn constantly particles, so up here in the spawn we can say it's a single burst, remove the other one with only one particle for the count. Let me turn on the control panel so I can play and stop this, all right. It's a particle already with movement, but for now we can remove this velocity. It's going to be different and we can say the lifetime is constant. We can turn off random and say it's 0 0.3. Let's create a float property and call it the teeth lifetime. Let me turn on the move anchor because we need to offset this we want this to start more or less around here and then go down to the center and do the same for the bottom part of the teeth. So, in the initialize particle we can offset this by using a set position block. And in the Y we are going to need a value that's shared with other particle systems, so let's create a float property and call it the teeth start distance or start position with a value of 1.2 for example and connect this to the Y. As you can see, we have offset this and it's going to start from here now. And we will adjust it as we go. Now we need to move this down to the center. So in the update particle, where it keeps on updating the particle, we are going to say set velocity. And for this, we are going to use a curve so we can control the motion, like start slow and end fast. And this animation curve property is going to be called teeth velocity motion. For the curve, we want something like this, for now. It starts at 0 and gradually goes to 1. Every time we have a curve, an animation curve, we need to sample it first, before connecting to a float. And for the time, we have the age over lifetime, which is normalized between 0 and 1, independent of the lifetime of the particle. And we can connect this to the Y, and here we go. It goes up, actually, mostly because of the curve. We can have control over the velocity if we multiply this, for example by 3, it goes much faster up, as you can see, or by 7, which is going to be probably our final value. But we don't want this to go up, right? We want this to go down to the center of the pivot of our VFX graph. So in this curve, instead of starting at 0, it's going to start, we can do with a right click and say the value is going to be minus 1. And for the last key, the value is going to be zero. It has velocity in the beginning and no velocity towards the end of the lifetime. Like this. Great. Let's rename this output particle to top teeth. Select everything and we right click, create a group selection and give it the exact same name, top teeth. Let's select the group and Ctrl C, Ctrl V, duplicate this and rename it bottom teeth. And in this case, we don't want the Y of the set position to be positive. We want it to be negative. Fortunately, we have a negate node that will convert this to a negative value. Let's do the same down here. We don't want this to move down, we want this to move up. So let's negate after the curve. Exactly, and they join themselves in the middle, as you can see. We need to adjust a little bit the motion and the speed and the distance so they are perfectly synced. But that's once we have the texture. So let's take care of that, let's open Krita, I'm going to use it because it's free and it's actually a great software that I highly recommend. 
And once it is open, you can create a new file with 2048 by 2048, for example, in the content you can say the background color is black. Once you press OK or Create, you are going to have this empty layer and on it, I cannot obviously guide your hand, but I'm going to try my best to guide you. And on this layer, with the brush tool selected and with the hairbrush soft selected, we want to go ahead and with the brush size of more or less 350 pixels, we are going to draw a teeth, something similar to a teeth. <laughs> Let's paint a vertical line, a small vertical line with a pointy end at the bottom, just like this. And now I'm going to select the erase tool with an opacity of uh, around 30%. Remove a little bit on the top, as you can see. Remove a little bit on the sides of this triangle of the pointy end, like this, pass a few times and then remove more or less on the sides, all over the sides. Remove a little bit and then remove more on the bottom, as you can see. And if you want, you can go down here to the brush presets and select the blender smear. And with more or less 60 pixels for the size, I'm going to push this a little bit down, as you can see, to create a pointy end. Just a little bit. And up here, I'm going to push this up a tiny bit as well. And if you want, you can create a few more details in your teeth, something like this, for example. Because now, in the filter, we are going to go to Blur and select Motion Blur. We are going to say the angle is 90 degrees and increase the length quite a lot, even the maximum. And if I enable or disable the preview, you can see the difference. It blends everything nicely together. And you can do this motion blur a few more times in case you need it. But I'm going to do it only one time. This is obviously too big. So now I'm going to select this arrow up here and press Ctrl T. And while holding Shift, I'm going to decrease this to more or less this size. Now we are going to make a composition. We are going to duplicate this layer with right click. And again with Ctrl T, I'm going to push this to the side. Duplicate again the layer. Move it the same amount to the side and then create a group, duplicate this group. I'm going to move this group more or less around here. I want six teeth at the top. And now I'm going to duplicate one of these, drag them out of the group, push it to the side. And then while holding shift, I'm going to increase its size proportionally and push it a tiny bit down. I'm going to duplicate it and with Ctrl T and while holding shift, I'm going to push it to the left. You see what we are doing here, right? You can duplicate one of these small teeth, push it to the left or to the right and decrease its size, as you can see. Do again, do the same thing for the right side. And now I'm going to create a group with all of these. I'm going to call it the top teeth. I'm going to try to center this a little bit. And then I'm going to duplicate with right click this group and rename it the bottom teeth. And with Ctrl T while holding Shift, I'm going to go to this corner and rotate this 180 degrees. And then with Alt, I'm going to select this side and enlarge this, as you can see, until the big teeth of the bottom is between the smaller and the big teeth of the top. And then push this a little bit up. We want them to be larger. And we don't need this teeth from the side, as you can see. That's it. Now, all we got to do is hide the black background. We are going to export this separately, the top and the bottom teeth. You can do a few more adjustments, but basically, I'm going to hide the bottom row, hide the black background as well, and export this as a PNG. You can export it directly to your project, rename it byte01 or 02, underscore top teeth. And then you can add this group and show the bottom teeth and export them with the same name, but replace the top with bottom as a PNG as well. And now I'm going to select both of these textures and turn on Alpha's transparency and press apply. We are going to assign them respectively. Top teeth with the top teeth texture. I'm going to rename this output, I forgot, and assign the bottom teeth texture. And once we press play, <laughs> it's almost good, but it is way too small. 
always use something as a reference for the size. I know it is too small because I have this cube, which is more or less the size of a character. Now we can adjust it with the set size in the output particle before the set size of our life. Say it's one. Actually, remove the set size of our life because we need a set scale of our life that we are going to use in a moment. We just need to say these curves are a line, a one, so they don't change over lifetime for now. They shouldn't change for now. Let's do the same for the bottom teeth by simply holding control and drag and drop set size. It will duplicate it. And while holding control, once again, drag and drop the set scale. Great. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now let's take care of the color. We are going to use a gradient for this. Let's create a property for that. Teeth gradient, exactly. And it's going to start with almost red. The H value is going to be around 6 or 5, for example like this, and for the last key, we want something a little bit more orange, you can copy my values down here by the way, and I'm going to increase the intensity to around 3, 2.5, more or less those values, and at the beginning I'm actually going to push this color key to the right and add another key more or less around here, almost red, with a H value of 2. If you connect this to the set color of a life of the top and the bottom teeth and then test this out, as you can see, we get a very interesting result already. I'm just going to increase a little bit the intensity of the last key and push this top alpha key a little bit more to the right. Here we go, looking very good. That's essentially it, the bite effect. Let's do the sparks for now. By the way, you can create a teeth velocity multiplier so you don't need to adjust the velocity on the curve. The default value of 7, for example. Alright, simple particle system with the space bar. This is going to be for our particles impact. We can already create a group and rename the output particle down here. Once again, this doesn't need to be constantly spawning particles. Let's use a burst of around 30 particles, but as you can see they are almost on the ground, in fact they are at the origin of the world, because this particle system is in world space, let's switch it to be in local, by clicking here. Great, but now they are firing way too soon, so what we can do is add a delay by selecting this spawn block up here and in the inspector we can say delay before loop in the delay mode. Let's create a property for that, a delay of around 0 0.3. We are going to adjust this. And well, the motion is going to be different. We don't need the set velocity. We need the sphere, set position sphere. The radius, it's going to be way smaller, like 0 0.1. So they are in the sphere position. Now we need to add motion to this. Let's just switch the texture to the default particle that comes with Unity and switch the orient to be aligned or along with velocity. Nothing happens because, well, we don't have any velocity. Which means that up here, we are going to add it in a moment. Let's control the size with the set size since we are here. And the set size of our life in this case needs to be multiplied, the composition so it doesn't overwrite the set size. Let's say the set size is 2 and that the curve of the size of a lifetime it goes from big to small. And as you can see, still nothing appears, mostly because we don't have velocity. Up here, in the initialized particle, we are going to use a set velocity from direction and speed. And here we go, now they are huge! Let's decrease the set size. Let's actually say it's random between 0 0.1 and 0 0.8, for example. And we need to stretch them, so let's use a set scale and shrink the x, for example, to 0 0.15 and the y to 0 0.8. Alright, that's something a little bit better. We can control the velocity up here in the set velocity from direction and speed. In fact, we can use a random number between 3 and 10, by the way. And the lifetime, it's way too high. Something between 0 0.1 and 0 0.8, it's enough. 
and now a little bit of gravity. It can also be random, by the way, between minus 7 and minus 9, for example. And here we go, we have some nice particles. We just need to adjust the delay. If we slow this down, it's not firing at the right time. 0 0.27 for the delay, let's see how it goes. Much better. And now we can take care of the color. So down here, in this case we can remove the set color of a life. We don't want a gradient, we simply need a set color. I'm gonna pick a reddish orange color and increase the intensity to around 3, 4. Looking good. Another trick we can do for the set color is use random. We can copy color A and paste it to color B, but the difference is in the saturation we can decrease it and decrease the intensity to around 2.5. It really adds a nice punch to the byte. We could do a few more things, but the last one I'm gonna show is to add a flare to this. It will improve the impact, the punchiness. Search for a simple particle system. I'm gonna select the flare, but you can select a default particle. I'm gonna show you how to create the flare in a moment. We can go ahead and take care of the set size of our life. From big to small, it's going to be an impact, impactful. And we can control the size with the set size. Set it to random between 2 and 3. That should be enough. And the set color of a life, we can, we can say it's multiply for the composition and alpha composition. And now use the set color before the multiply color of a life. And well, you can pick a similar color to the one we have been using. Reddish, orange, something like that. Increase a little bit intensity. That looks nice. We can add a random angle. So they have random rotation. And we can say it's random in the inspector and 360 and minus 360 for the Z. That should do it. We can remove the set velocity. We don't need this to move. Lifetime much shorter. It's impactful like 0 0.18 and 0 0.2. And up here, no constant spawn rate, but a burst with one for the count. We just need to add a delay to this. Remember, before loop, connect the delay and here we go. Much better. You obviously need to make a few more adjustments, but essentially, oh, don't forget to set the size of our life to multiply, otherwise the set size will be overrated. All right, looking good. Now that's much better, yeah. Let's create a flare. It's very, very simple. In Krita, I'm gonna show you a basic flare. In a new file with 2048 by 2048, I'm gonna pick the brush and the hairsoft brush up here. I'm gonna increase its size more or less like this, above 1300 pixels. Click one time, decrease the size, try to click on the center, decrease again, and click one more time. Here we go. We can duplicate this layer and with Ctrl T, we are going to shrink it horizontally and stretch it vertically. Duplicate it. Ctrl T, rotate it while you hold Shift. 90 degrees. And that's it. That's pretty much it. If you want, you can duplicate the vertical line and squeeze it a little bit more like this and then shrink it so it's a little bit more brighter in the center. And that's pretty much it for a very simple flare. Export it as a PNG. And here we go, you can assign it to your particle system, the flare one, and that's it. You can make a few more adjustments, obviously, but at least you have the essential idea on how to create a byte. Pretty cool stuff. If you want to get this project, it's all available on my Patreon page. By supporting me, you get access to many more assets that you can use in your game. There's plenty of visual effects there that will help you. I want to say thank you to each patron that supported me last month. Quick shout out goes to the top tier patrons, which are 3D Sorcery, Alexandre Carvalho, Alper Arichai, Achilles Benitez, Aviat Tobali, Kruby Dubidu, Cyber Cradle, Daniel Schmidt, Dave Game Dev, Diego Marcos, Duitran, Effect Yellow, El Sheriff, Gio, Glitched Goose, Goblin Plague, Guilherme Trindade, Rairo Garcia, Casey Miller, Leon Holt, Mark Anum, Michael Gann, Michael Laid, Naru, Nat Sims, NGY, Oitsk, Pradip Sen, Radioactive Bullfrog, Ray Chen, Revenant Games, Strong Fam, Very Suta, Will Hughes, Will Polium, Dong Mong Dong, and Chang Pion Ling. You guys are awesome and I appreciate a lot your support, it really keeps me going. And I hope you have enjoyed this vid. To anyone who watched this, I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.